All right, welcome back, fellow Shopify entrepreneurs. We're here today to go over all of the new updates, features, improvements, and new things that the Shopify developers have for us for the month of January. Every month on this channel, I go over the Shopify change log as running multiple Shopify stores over the years. This is one of the most invaluable resources for improving your store and taking advantage of all the newest and greatest features on an ever evolving platform like Shopify and a platform that you run your entire business on. So I can't wait to get started today. I'm gonna start the slow scroll here year for January. This is what we'll be covering in today's session. And I'll let you guys know right away. This is gonna be a long video. I mean, you can see how long the video is with the timestamp in the corner. But there are so many updates specifically on January 31st. I don't know what happened. I mean, look at this January 31st, January 31st, January 31st, January 31st, January 31st. And I do these every month, once a month, just to cover the change log for that month. But I do not know what's going on January 31st. It's still going. So we have a lot of updates, features, new things and improvements to go through. But I hope all your guys' Shopify stores have been going great one month, now two months into the new year. Look at this, it's still going January 31st. What the heck? It's been a, it's been a little bit of a crazy month. Um, it is still going. There's been a lot going on uh, recently in the Shopify uh, world. As we can see right here, I'll stop the scroll for a second. Shopify winter editions came out and that's my favorite time of the year, to be honest, because if you don't know what editions is, it's Shopify's twice a year big event where they release their gr latest and greatest. We're finally at the top, their latest and greatest features and everything that the developers have been working on in so sort of a big event called editions. Uh, I covered summer 23 editions last year in detail. You can check out my playlist for that. And I can't wait to go over all the great content in winter editions 24. But it's been a little bit of a hectic e-commerce time because, you know, we're coming off of the busiest time of the year, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the holiday season. And then that always spreads into January because a lot of people are returning things and have exchanges and, and there's a lot of things happening at the end of the year. But also there was a big update. I'm sure you guys know, if you guys are running your own Shopify stores, there was a, big, there was a huge update, not on Shopify's end, but on Google and Yahoo's end for branded email domains. So who does this affect? If you're using a branded email for your sender notification, there was a lot of stuff you had to do. And I run multiple Shopify stores, so any kind of major update that happens like this, I have to do like three times, <laughs> uh, currently three times. And and so this was kind of a shock and a big deal. Essentially, if you are, if you have, you know, if you have a Shopify store you or an e-commerce store in general, you have a domain that you purchased. Okay. That's a given. But within Shopify, Shopify doesn't do email hosting, right? They offer email forwarding, but they don't host your email. So if you want your sender notification to show your domain for business purposes, for example, if you want your customer service email, public email to say customer service at your store.com instead of customer service, your store at gmail.com. You need a branded domain. So you a branded email domain, and then you have to go to Google or Yahoo or whoever you want to host. And then you can verify your domain for your store and verify that that domain and your email is actually yours. And then you can purchase for a certain amount a month, a hosted branded email domain. It's very common. It's not rare at all. You know, every major company has these, but there was just a big update with Google and Yahoo where we had to add DMARC record and also verify and authenticate the domain. So, you know, with e-commerce, you've been following me for a while. This is kind of the way things go in e-commerce. You know, you log on one day to try to achieve some things and you see a big major update that'll push, you know, your plans and all your excitement back until that's accomplished. And that, that wasn't, you know, that's depending on, you know, dom domains and stuff like this can kind of go on. You can really learn so much about domains. If you go down the rabbit hole of domains, it can be a very simple topic. If you just stay on the shallow level and you'll be fine. But if you go down and learn about domains, it, becomes quite complicated. And if you have to, if you have to authenticate a domain that you didn't buy on Shopify from a third party for a host that obviously isn't hosted on Shopify, I mean, it's a complicated process to kind of get your records from Shopify and then go to your third party domain provider and input those records, those CXT records and a DMARC policy for Google. It's quite complicated. I'm going to stop talking about it because it's all done now for me. I hope it's all done for you guys as well. But a lot of things happening in the e-commerce world. But today we are going to go through all of this Shopify change log for January. So everybody is nice and updated on the platform and we can brainstorm new ideas on what to work on next. And we understand what is changing, what is improving what is affecting and some things that are being removed I'm sure as you've seen the scroll there are a few things being removed so let's jump into this like I said right before I start this is gonna be a longer video as you see by the timestamp so some, sometimes it might be more helpful to play this in more of a podcast format I do narrate 
what I'm seeing and I read what the title and the description and what these updates mean. And then I also give you my personal opinion from my experiences and all that. So if you want to just close your eyes for a little bit or play me in the background, feel free to do that. But let's get started. We're using a nice pink color today. So the first update here on January 4th is regarding Shopify Collective. It's funny to see because I do these videos every month, the gap and where we left off last time. It's kind of like an ever evolving book that we kind of all come here once a month and read together and we can see where we left off on December 19th. Because I remember in the last video, if you want to check it out, it's on my channel. I made a comment stating that we can clearly see, you know, when the developers took the year off here on December 19th and went on holidays and whatever they celebrate. And then now they're all back in January and we have quite a lot of updates. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Sit back, relax. Let's talk about Shopify for a little bit. So the first update here on January 4th is talking about Shopify Collective. It says Shopify Collective orders are simplified for suppliers. The note here says your Shopify Collective orders experience is now simpler to help you ship orders more efficiently and get paid faster by your retailers. So this is an update for people obviously using Shopify Collective. If we click in here, we see a little bit more information. If you, do, if you don't know what Shopify collective is first off shopify collective is i think it's a relatively new feature on shopify it's a way for anybody to sell their products as a retailer to other shopify stores as the fulfiller for other shopify stores so if you sell candles on your shopify store and you're selling them and you have a website and you're selling your candles to customers online on the internet with shopify collective you can become the supplier for another shopify store so another shopify store could list your candles on their store maybe one or all of them and then they work through the process with Shopify Collective and now this cut this merchant store is selling another Shopify's store goods and that's kind of how this transfer works uh, it's you know i think it, this looking into it there are some requirements like you have to be in the united states you have to use shopify payments and you have to actually make a certain amount in sales to be able to use shopify collective but that's essentially what shopify collective is um, and if you're using it, it looks like they have changed the mark as paid to now indicate that payment has been collected from your collective retailer. So it's a little bit different when you're selling to a customer online and you're dealing with Shopify Collective as a retailer or a wholesaler. As now it says, Shopify Collective orders will no longer be marked as authorized, but they're now going to be marked as paid. I don't know how many people that affects, especially with, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of you just starting out your e-commerce journey. That's a little background of Shopify Collective and, and what that does. All right, moving right along on January 8th, we have a new update here. We always get excited to see the yellow new. Uh, we have a new update here for Shopify Flow. And here it just says Shopify Flow, you can now get discount data. So it says in the note, you can now use a get discount data action in Flow. Okay, so this is a small little update, but there's kind of a lot to unpack here if you're a beginner. So Shopify Flow, first and foremost, is a app made and developed by Shopify that is free and it can help you automate tasks. So the rest of the note here says you can now use get a use a get discount data action in flow and in the action you can get a list of discounts and then use that data to automate processes in your store or send schedule reports it also says to give it a try you can build the workflow from scratch in flow or use a new template so shopify flow is a way to automate tasks similar to how email marketing kind of works essentially there is a trigger at the very beginning that's triggered by one item and then there are a few if conditions if a customer bought this do this if a discount is used do this if this order is shipped do this and this is kind of the flow it can help you automate a lot of tasks so in flow you can build a workflow from scratch using actions and triggers and these sort of things to make a flow that ends up looking like this all the way down or you can use a template and um, shopify flow is a little bit complicated so don't feel overwhelmed if you look at it for the first time or you're trying to figure out best ways to use it and it's just not working for you it is complicated but it can help with a lot of things but sometimes it can just complicate things so don't worry about it if you don't want to use it one of the best ways to use it is to use the templates that shopify provides and then you don't have to create anything yourself because when you create things yourself you can get a lot of errors and a few a few videos ago 
there was actually an update to Shopify Flow that allowed you to to run another flow on a flow to see where specific errors were, which is kind of helpful. But all this is saying is that there's an action called get right here, get, and get gets you data. You can use this for customer data, order data, all sorts of data, but now it's specifically saying they added a get discount data, right? So the action or the trigger is get, and then what is it getting? It's getting discount data now, right? And then you can use your discount data for a lot of different things if you need, but that's that's essentially all you gotta know with that little quick update. I don't know what happened with the change log here. These things are supposed to be in order, obviously, the timeline, January 4th, January 8th, and then January 10th and January 15th. And then all of a sudden, right in the middle here, there's January 31st. I don't know why, but I guess we'll cover this. This is another January 31st uh, with all the ones up top. But anyway, this one says uh, new discovery filters for retailers, again, in the Shopify collective discovery. OK, so the note here says with the addition of three new filters within the Shopify collective discovery, finding the perfect suppliers has never been easier. Essentially, this is just saying within Shopify Collective, again, there's a tab that says discovery. And this is a way that you can find suppliers for your products. So what they did now is that they added specific criteria to help you find the retailers and the suppliers that are best for you. And those new filters are supplier status filter, which says retailers can now filter suppliers based on their status, specifically whether they are active on collective or eligible to join. The second filter is US shipping rate filter. It says retailers can now filter suppliers offering US free shipping. And then the third filter is margin range filter. It says filters can now specify their preferred margin range and discover suppliers that meet their profitability requirements. So three new filters when you're trying to use Shopify Collective to maybe sell or buy another Shopify store's products and you can filter those stores by supplier status filter, US shipping filter, and margin range filter. Moving right along here on January 10th, this is a quick little update. It's a new update and it's coming to the balance, Shopify balance. It says you can now earn 3.86% annually with Shopify balance. And the note says idle cash now rewards you when saved in your balance account. Rate is accurate of January 9, 2024 and subject to change. And all this is saying is that if you have a Shopify balance account for your payouts and buy things with your Shopify balance account, you can now earn 3.86% in the form of an annual percentage yield on all money held in the balance account. So if you have you know, payouts that are in your balance account and they're just sitting there idle and you're not buying anything uh, with your balance card and there's no transactions lining up or anything, idle cash will now have 3.86% annually. This is an interesting update on January 15th. There's a new feature coming to markets. It has to do with domains. So it says redirect visitors to translated store funds based on their browser language. That's pretty interesting. So merchants can now automatically redirect visitors to translated storefronts with the language redirection settings within their markets. This is kind of interesting. So obviously markets and language translation and redirection is super important in e-commerce. You have the ability to set up markets for where you want to sell and these markets will have different currencies and different languages and different products, different shipping rates and all kinds of things like that. So this is kind of an ongoing battle that Shopify is always trying to help merchants with. But essentially it says if you have um, a domain, for example, here it is .ca for Canada. So if your domain is johnsapparel.ca for, for a Canadian market and the default language is English, when language redirection, the new feature, is activated and a visitor from Canada has their browser's currency set to French, because in Canada there's two primary languages, Canada and French. So if the browser's primary language is set to French, it will automatically be redirected to johnsapparel.ca French storefront FR which is a market in your market settings, which has French language, French products, French shipping rates, all kinds of things directed on the market. So this isn't for no reason. This has to do with your market settings. So uh, two things ha have to happen here. You have to have the market activated and you also have to have a URL redirect. But 
the update is saying it will now automatically redirect visitors based on their browser's language. I find that part very interesting. The browser's language, it'll detect the browser's language and then automatically redirect the merchant based on their browser language to the market that has that browser language. I like it, it's, that's, that's fascinating. Moving right along, we have a few things here on January 15th. This is an improvement in the analytics. It says there's an enhanced, I don't know why there's a calendar emoji here. I've never seen that anywhere, <laughs> but okay. It says enhanced sales tax reports now support annual filing. So new US sales tax report, the new US sales tax report from Shopify TAC is better than ever. You can now select a full year report in addition to existing quarterly and monthly options. Anything to do with tax is very hard to talk about and very hard to teach because everybody's tax situation is extremely different. But essentially, uh, this is just a small improvement in the sales tax report if you're using Shopify tax. That's the key here. Who can use Shopify tax? It used to only be for US merchants, but if you watch my update videos, you'll remember that a few updates ago, they updated Shopify tax to include not only merchants who are in the US and selling in the US, but also merchants who are outside of the US, but selling in the US, which is a lot more people, right? So there's a lot of benefits to using Shopify tax, and it's just a way to help file and manage, you know, Shopify is trying to help merchants with taxes and taxes are a huge stressor in e-commerce and in business. And so what they are doing is now that they, they have offered an annual filing, an annual filter for this tax report, which you can see in your United States tax settings page or access it from the reports section of your Shopify admin. Moving right along here, we have another one on January 15th. The last one on January 15th, it says Shopify duties and import taxes preferential treaty support is the title. The note here says Shopify duties and import taxes now support preferential trade agreements in duty calculation. Okay, so that's a lot of words that might be a little boring and stressful to read. But again, if you watch my videos for a while, you'll remember a few videos ago that they added this preferential treaty support. What is a treaty? A treaty is a trade agreement between the countries. So for example, you have the United States, Mexico and Canada, the USMCA free trade agreement. And and these things are always, you know, changing and updating over the years, uh, but it's a way for, you know, allied countries to do better business between each other. So a few months ago, Shopify introduced this new treaty support, and I believe it was for taxes because when you're selling to other markets and other countries, there's a lot of taxes, there's a lot of duties. You have to check, you know, the regulations on what you're selling, and if you send a customer something, if there's going to be customs or duties to it, um, there's a lot more that goes into that. If you uh, compared to if you're selling just in your own country, so the uh, key update here is that they already had preferential treaties. They updated that a few months ago, I believe. But now they're saying Shopify duties and import taxes now supports preferential trade agreements in duties calculation. So it says preferential treaties are applied using the shipping origin, shipping destination, products, country of origin, and products harmonized system codes. So obviously when you're, like I said, selling to different markets, you have to kind of consider these things. And Shopify Markets helps you a lot with that, especially Shopify Markets Pro if you're eligible. But it says when a preferential treaty is applied, buyers will see reduced duty rates in checkout. For example, the United States, Mexico, Canada free trade agreement enables merchants to ship their products within North America with reduced import fees when they are manufactured in North America. So it's interesting to see an update kind of be announced maybe a month or two ago and then that update be revisited to add a new feature to the new update in this case is duties. It's a little update there if you're selling to multiple markets. Okay, this is an interesting update. It's a it's a removal of a feature. To be honest, this is very rare to see. I don't know if they just didn't tell us this in the change log before or that they don't really remove things that much. But this is interesting to know. This is why these this change log is even more valuable now. So it says on January 16th, the product insights page was removed from the analytics. So it says the product insights page has been removed from the analytics. You can get product specific insights from sales reports or product detail pages moving forward. So this was a beta. It says on the next page that the product insights page was a beta feature and they're going to release a new and improved version of that later in 2024 is what it says and in the interim you can find product specific insights from your sales reports or your product detail pages moving forward until they release the new improved product insight page uh, later in 2024 obviously if you run e-commerce you understand how important the analytics section is and understanding 
product specific analytics is super important. It can answer a lot of questions on what to work on next or what discounts to buy or what products to push or anything like that. So if you know, if you're wondering on what to work on next, you can find a lot of answers to your questions in the analytics section. And this is just one improvement in this case, a removal for a new product that's coming in later 2024. Moving right along, we have another update here on January 16th. Another one about Shopify Collective. You know, it's interesting to see these change logs because there is a theme to the month, it seems like. It seems like the developers really put a lot of effort in one area every month. I remember a few months ago when I was doing these videos, it was almost exclusively POS updates, which was shocking to see. And now I think this is the third collective, Shopify collective update this month. We'll see if that continues moving forward. But on January 16th, there's another update here for Shopify collective. It says automatic order cancellation for suppliers after 14 days. This is pretty straightforward. So it says suppliers will no longer be required to manually cancel or orders older than 14 days when a retailer requests a cancellation. And then it also continues here to say that the automatic supplier order cancellation action is met if the orders are not only over 14 days old, as said in the title, but if orders that remain unfulfilled, orders that have been canceled, or orders for which the retailer has explicitly explicitly requested fulfillment cancellation. So just a little uh, improvement there for the management process in the Shopify Collective as we see more and more updates for Shopify Collective moving forward. We have an uh, improvement here on January 24th, but this is only for plus merchants. So if you're a plus merchant, you're probably not watching this video. Plus merchants is the tier of plan above advanced. So with Shopify, there's three main tiers. There's basic, there's Shopify, there's advanced. Below basic, there's starter, which I'm actually a huge proponent of, but I think is mainly overlooked. It's really good for beginners. And then above this, they have something called plus. And that's for the biggest merchants, you know, Mr. Beast Store, uh, Staples, Gymshark. These are all companies that are making millions and millions of dollars and they are plus merchants. So I'm not gonna cover much about that, but it just says something about the POS login for plus member members. All right, January 24th, we have an update. This is a change. Uh, this is a change to a feature that was once before. Now they've updated it. It comes in the markets and says, the update is that the pricing, there's now going to be a pricing selector for draft orders. So obviously a draft order is when you create an order as a draft. And it says that the draft order market selector has been updated to a pricing selector, allowing merchants to modify pricing and presentment currency. Other settings remain unchanged. This is key. So what this is saying is that when you create a draft order, there used to be a market selector. So this is a change in the market. And depending on the market for where the order is being placed, you could then choose your market if you're selling in multiple markets like this. Now they changed this so that you don't select it with a market, but you select it with a price, a pricing selector, because one of the things in the market is the price and the currency, right? But then it continues and says other settings remain unaffected. So this means the shipping settings and the taxes and the duties and all these things. And that's because this relies on the shipping address of the order, but they just made a little change here. So that instead of selecting the market on your draft orders, you select a pricing selector and then the other settings in market settings like language and syntaxes and shipping and all these things and products still remain unchanged. So just a little update there if you do a lot of draft orders selling multiple markets. All right, we have another update here that is completely out of order on the timeline. I don't know what is going on with this. We have January 24, 24, 29, 26. What is going on here? So on the 29, we have an updated order details experience in the Shopify mobile app. That's pretty fun. It's just an improvement on the mobile app here. It says refreshed they refreshed the design of the order details page in the Shopify mobile app. Uh, the Shopify mobile app is pretty good. I honestly don't really use it that much. It's good for troubleshooting. Like if you see one thing on your web, on your website, your admin, and it's like, what the heck is that? You can sometimes verify if that's like a glitch or if that's actually how it looks if you look in the Shopify mobile app as well. But maybe that's the issue. So it says that they've updated a lot of things. Uh, some improvements to the order details page in the Shopify mobile app. They over gave it an overall user experience refresh. They added some contact icons in the customer card. Uh, the subtotal amounts in the payment card can now accurately reflect 
pre-tax values. There's a refund button. You can add a customer. If the customer wasn't added, you can add shipping details to the customer card if an order does not have a shipping address. So little updates there for the Shopify mobile app. Didn't know they had a mobile. If you didn't know they had a Shopify mobile app, you can try the Shopify mobile app and, and tell me what you think or where you find it useful compared to your admin. This is a little fun improvement moving right along, but moving backward on this broken timeline. This one uh, is a quick little update that makes a lot of sense and, and is very easy to understand and affects a lot of merchants. So it says shipping service suggestions are now available when purchasing Shopify shipping label. It says suggested shipping services will be pre-selected based on similar orders in your store. So this is just an optimization based on timing. So if you run a Shopify store, you can buy Shopify shipping labels straight from your admin. A lot of you know that. And if you use Shopify shipping, you actually get a little bit of a discount and that's the incentive to use Shopify shipping. So if you buy a label at your post office or you buy a label with Shopify shipping, you should see a little bit of a discount using the Shopify shipping label instead as an incentive to use that and to purchase hardware and stuff from them. Um, but this is quite easy to understand. So to increase the accuracy and the speed of buying shipping labels process, you know, e-commerce time is everything. Time is very meaningful in all business, especially in e-commerce. It says that we have improved how shipping services are pre-selected when buying shipping labels. It says a suggested, a suggested shipping service will be pre-selected. So the suggested will be pre-selected based on similar orders in your store, rather than pre-selecting the last used service to increase accuracy and speed of buying shipping labels. That's super helpful if you get a ton of orders and it's just a list like this and it's like, oh my gosh, I have to fulfill and buy and send and ship, um, you know, saving a few seconds here and there with a pre-selected or, or a, a suggested, I should say, shipping service based on similar orders and similar sizes and similar weights can save a lot of time in the aggregate. So, all right, we are uh, almost at the end here, but are we? We have reached January 31st, but as we saw, there's a lot on January 31st. We don't know what happened on January 31st. Crazy things went down on January 31st, but let's look through these. Okay, wow, this is a interesting new addition here on January 31st, and we'll see how the other January 31st updates come based on this one. But it says, there's a new feature for the Shopify Flow app. I don't know what Shopify Flow is before, but it says there's a new run code action. So it says you can now use a run code action in Flow to write Java code to solve your automation need. Okay, if you're like me and you, that feels very overwhelming to hear, <laughs> I feel you because I run multiple Shopify stores and I've been running multiple Shopify stores for a long time now. I personally don't know that much about coding and I strongly believe you don't need to know that much about coding to run an e-commerce store in today's world. Everything is moving away from coding. And obviously coding is super important for a product to come up and everything you're looking at on the internet is code. But to actually run an e-commerce business from a Shopify admin or whatever e-commerce platform you want, you don't need to know about coding. Everything is moving to drag and drop. Everything is moving to simplicity so that the average merchant doesn't need to know much about coding, but they can still pursue their dreams and run their business. So I see that there's a new run code action in the Shopify Flow app, Shopify Flow. And it kind of looks like this, where you can write JavaScript code to return data into a workflow based on the inputs in your code. If you want to take a look, you can pause the video here and take a look at the remaining notes on this, but I'm just not going to dive too deeply into that because beginning shop, beginner Shopify merchants don't need to know this. All right. All of these are going to be on January 31st. So I'm going to stop announcing the date, but it says here new product has been launched for Shopify scripts and product bundles. A note here says that now merchants using Shopify scripts can use Shopify bundle offering. So there's two things to unpack here. First is Shopify scripts. Shopify scripts is a way that you can customize your checkout, but it's only for plus. So it it's not really worth talking about here. Only for Plus, we discuss what Plus is. But as you know, if you try to edit your online store in the theme editor and you go to the checkout option using the little gear and the page, and then you select checkout, once you get to the checkout, there's there's nothing really to customize anymore. There's nothing really you can click. That's to keep the checkout nice and secure and work usable and consistent and just reliable overall. But if you're a Shopify Plus member, you can use Shopify scripts to edit that a little bit. And now it says that you can use product bundles bundling one product into a bundle where this actually counts as a product. Um, you can now use Shopify scripts and product bundles. <clears throat> All right, we're almost at the end here and, and look at the next few updates. I see an improvement for collective, a feature for collective and another feature for collective. So, I mean, you can clearly see the theme of this month and where the developers were focusing on. If you don't use Shopify collective, it's totally fine. Shopify has so many products for different businesses. If you don't use it now, it's totally okay. If you never plan on using it, totally okay. But maybe all these updates are starting to spur your attention. You didn't know about it before. Now you do. And maybe it's something that you can look into 
when you have time and you want to grow your business further. But there's a little improvement here that says an improved visibility of retailer cancellation requests for collective suppliers. So it says a new badge has been added to the orders page displaying quick visibility into order cancellation requests from the respective collective retailer. So all this is saying, it's pretty straightforward, is that when a retailer cancels their request, cancels their order with the supplier, there's a new badge next to it that says this merchant has canceled this request for this reason and this is to show again quick visibility onto the order and so that the retailer and the supplier can action these requests a lot faster with that visible queue and that visible bad all right moving right along we have another collective uh, update here like i said it says collective suppliers gain quick visibility into the status of product sharing so it says suppliers can quickly and efficiently view which retailer connections are awaiting the sharing of a price list through a new sticker on the retail's badge this sounds very similar to this improvement down below obviously when you're working with suppliers and retailers there's a relationship that needs to form there because if business goes good for one person business is good for the other person and you want to have speed and transparency and a strong communication channel between supplier and retailer and one way they seem to be doing this is by adding a new badge here and they're adding a new sticker here so that this relationship can continue to improve and business can run well for both sides another way to improve that collective uh, relationship between suppliers and retailers is if you can find products better. So that's exactly what this new update here is saying. It says AI, everybody loves AI now, AI powered search suggestions for retailers in Shopify Collective Discovery. So again, Shopify Collective, we went over suppliers and retailers, and then discovery is where you find the suppliers and the retailers. So what it's saying here is collective retailers can now expect even stronger and more relevant results when searching for different terms in discovery uh, to inspire the new types of partnerships. So that's an interesting uh, little update that seems to be popping up more and more. I can click through this. It's just a quick little note if you want to read it. But the way people search for terms, no matter where it is, if it's on Google or it's on Amazon, it's on the Shop app, or if it's on Shopify or now it's on Collective Discovery, is super important. That's the first step of the searcher's intended journey. And so, you know, there's a lot of ways to match this over the years. You know, we've talked about you know, keywords matching and keyword research to match the searcher's intent. And then, you know, using synonyms and placing your uh, product at the top of your search results, even if this specific product isn't searched. You know, you can do that sort of thing in the search and discover app uh, on Shopify. But now, you know, clearly AI is the next generation here. And so we are seeing AI pop every pop up everywhere. And now we're seeing it in the search suggestions everywhere. So you can use AI powered search suggestions to find retailers in the Shopify collective app more easily to find exactly what you're looking for faster with the assistance of AI to guide that inspiration. Uh, moving up here, we have a update for Plus. I'm not gonna spend much time on this because we don't really cover Plus on this channel at all. Um, but the keyword here actually is Shopify audiences. Um, so the title here says retarget twice as many potential buyers with Shopify audiences. And Shopify audiences is a way that Plus members, it's a Plus feature, it's a Plus product can use the Shopify audiences tool to find new audiences with advertising and customer lists and that sort of thing. We're not gonna go over plus because we don't need to know that right now. Oh, I noticed this on my store before I even saw this update. So another one on January 31st, they're all on January 31st. It says a new update to the admin. Everybody uses the admin. Everybody knows what the admin is. So it says introducing customer privacy settings in the Shopify admin. This is actually the, the Shopify settings in your Shopify admin, but it says manage privacy settings. Okay. Centrally with the new customer privacy section in the Shopify admin, which is actually the Shopify settings. So this is super interesting. And again, it's a little hard to teach about because depending on what country you're in, customer privacy and the rules and laws for the web change quite drastically. Actually, it says right here, this is exactly what I was going to talk about. It says the Shopify privacy and compliance app will be discontinued on March 1st, 2024. So the Shopify privacy and compliance app is, is, is a way for European merchants specifically to uh, display like cookie banners and customer privacy statements and enable managed cookies. You know, any website you go to nowadays has these sort of things and has these pop-ups, I'm sure you've known. And so this is also kind of an ever evolving topic. But now a little update here, they should definitely check out 
says, we've just released the new customer privacy section in the Shopify admin. It keeps saying admin, but I know this is in the settings. So you go to settings in your admin and then below languages, you'll see customer privacy. Now you can easily manage privacy settings and expand into new markets. This updates into this update integrates features from Shopify privacy and compliance app, allowing you to configure settings per region, set up privacy policy, add a cookie banner, enable data opt outs and view data storage information all in one place. It's now available for all Shopify users. So this is the new age of the internet and websites, all this privacy policy, cookie banners, enable data, how we collect data, how we view and store your data. You know, this is at the forefront of every web page in the internet nowadays. And this is Shopify's newest update on that. So definitely check that out. Another new feature in products that everybody has access to, and this is talking about the Shopify bundles app. So it says support for up to 30 product bundles, 30 products in a bundle. It says we've increased the maximum number of products you can offer in a fixed bundle from 10 to 30. So all this is saying is that in the Shopify bundles app, Shopify bundles, I think it's just called bundles, is an app that allows you to create product bundles. So if you sell four products individually, this is super easy to set up and it's super relevant to all different industries and all different niches and all different businesses. So for example, if you have four products and uh, you can create a bundle where you sell these four products in one bundle and then you don't sell these four items at checkout anymore, you just offer and purchase one product at checkout, which includes these four. And you know, you can do this for a lot of reasons, marketing and moving slow moving product or pairing your best sellers with slow moving product for inventory purposes. And then usually, you know, you can mark this at a discount to increase your average order value, which is a super important metric. But now all it's saying is that before the Shopify bundles app could only offer 10 products per bundle. And now they've uh, simply increased that to 30 product maximum, a 30 product bundle. That's, uh, that's pretty good. I mean, you know, this is all about increasing average order value and increasing sales. So if you have customers that are willing to buy, you know, bundles of 10, now they can purchase bundles of 30 and that's more business and more sales for you. Another update here in the analytics, it's a new feature. It says new predictive spend metrics in cohort analysis. So it says a new predictive spend metrics in the cohort analysis report gives insight into the long-term value of customers. Okay, so this is a new metric coming to your analytics section, but this is only available to Shopify advanced members and above. So remember we had the three plans, primarily advanced is the one here on the far right, advanced, and then there's plus up here. And so the new predictive spend metrics are only for plus and advanced. But essentially the, the cohort, you should have the cohort analysis report. And that's a great report if you have historical data and this is a great way to tell which customer groupings are first time customers, repeat customers, and it kind of groups this information so that you can target and segment these customer groupings. And it also tells you when their first purchase would, was made and that sort of thing. So it's a very useful report that they're expanding here a little bit. Another quick little update and one that's very relevant to all plans and all people, it says media versioning. It says they have added the revert to original button in the product media editor to enable merchants to conveniently and quickly revert edits to product images after saving. So obviously product images and all that are very important when it comes to e-commerce and Shopify offers a, a few tools to edit your product images like cropping and drawing and resizing. And recently they've added some, um, product ed image editing with Shopify magic. Shopify magic is Shopify's AI bundle of product. Uh, but now what they've done is they've just added a revert to original button. There was the undo button and redo button. And that's also available in the theme editor as well to revert these changes. But sometimes when you're making these changes and you've made so many changes, instead of re uploading the whole image, um, they've added an option to just revert to original button, which is very helpful and very easy. Been a great month so far. We are almost done. Uh, this is quite the broad range of topics for this month's update. We're almost done here. There's one update here that is a little more technical. Uh, that is needed for new merchants like yourselves, but just becoming familiar with some of these terms when you're first starting out, even though you're not actioning anything is super important because then you just improve your understanding of e-commerce even more and more. So it says new DOM events in pixel. So it says pixels 
now support DOM events for improved customer behavior analytics. Okay, so pixels is the keyword here. A pixel is kind of a developer's tool, but a pixel is a way that you can understand analytics better. It tracks them more accurately, all sorts of customer events by adding what things that are called pixels. So the events that they've added are just these, input changed, input blurred, input focused, form submitted and clicked. And so these are events that work with the pixel to communicate these new APIs with the pixel to track customer events even more accurately. Again, it's kind of high level stuff. This is kind of more things for developers and partners, and it kind of goes into the code of some of these things, which is a whole topic on its own. All right, we have another update here that I won't spend much time on because it doesn't directly help new Shopify entrepreneurs, but it says new Shopify features and developer tools are now available on Hydrogen for custom storefronts. It says headless development on Shopify is now easier than ever uh, with more free Shopify features available on Hydrogen and new developer tools that make the path to production seamless. So this is something you don't really have to dive into, but essentially Hydrogen and headless and oxygen are... <laughs> <laughs> and we're still talking about e-commerce, I promise you. But these are ways and programs for developers and programmers to create custom storefronts. So, you know, if you visit online stores, they all kind of feel the same. You know, you have your header and your banner and your shop now and your collections and your products and your checkouts, and that's how it runs. But Hydrogen is a developer tool to create very different looking, extremely complex um, and quite beautiful e-commerce sites. If you want to get an understanding of what hydrogen or headless or oxygen can do, just look up Drake's store with Shopify, Drake and Shopify's partnership where they made Drake's mansion with hydrogen and you will see uh, it's very different from a banner and a menu and a collection. You can check it out if you're interested in that kind of thing. Here's a new feature coming to markets and shipping. It says uh, you can improve the accuracy of in-stock products in different markets with fulfillable inventory. So, so fulfillable inventory ensures that customers visiting your store will see and can purchase only those items that are available for shipping in their specific location. So this talks about inventory. This talks about products, in-stock inventory, and shipping and markets. So I haven't actually seen this myself yet. As we can see here, it's only available to select merchants, but we don't really have more information on what that means. But it sounds like, you know, in your inventory where it says available, not available, on hand, and there's one more category here for inventory. It sounds like there's going to be an extra column here for fulfillable based on if a product is in stock in a specific market so that you can increase accuracy, you can reduce overselling for different markets. This is an interesting update here. It's a new update for orders and draft orders and discounts, and it seems like it's available for everyone. This is an update that see, that's, every once in a while there's an update on this change log where it's just like, why wasn't that there before? Surely that's there before, and this is kind of one of them. So it says more, you have more ways to discount in draft orders. So it says we've, we've added more support for discounts in draft orders, helping you drive more sales. And essentially it just says that you can add your manual discounts, your automatic discounts, and everything that you've created to your draft orders now or more easily. So again, if you are making draft orders, definitely don't forget to add your marketing components to them by adding your discounts in for your campaigns. Moving right along, <laughs> this is a very exciting sounding update. And then I read Shopify plus merchants only. That's the thing with uh, Shopify, you know, when they release a new product, they usually release it for a certain cohort. It's usually that's plus or advanced members or just the United States and then they eventually expand it. So if you see an update here that's not available just yet, just be patient. Usually they expand it over time. But it says here, this is only for plus merchants, but it is very interesting. It says smarter search that understands customer intent. So let customers search for products using everyday language with our new semantic search feature available for Shopify plus merchants only in the search and discover app. So again, what I was talking about before is, you know, we have a new AI generation and now AI is really coming to the forefront for search intent you know search was driven by search intent for keywords and questions 
And now AI is transforming search intent and search feature. So one of my favorite apps, one of the most powerful free apps that Shopify makes and develops is the search, search and discovery app. I mentioned this before, I constantly, mention, I constantly mention it, but it sounds like they're adding a new semantic search, which is powered by AI to help return richer and more relevant results to the customer using the search and discover app and using AI for storefronts. I really hope that comes to non plus members very soon. Ooh, but we do have a new update here again to the search and discover app. And this doesn't say anything about plus. So this is kind of fascinating. It says new support for filter values that lead to no results. So it says using the search and discovery app, you can now customize your filter values that are displayed when there are no matching products. So it's saying if customer searches on your online store and there's no matching products, you can now ensure your customers can easily filter products by moving filter values with no matches to the end or by hiding them entirely. So you can make these customizations by going to the Shopify search and discovery app settings. And then there's a new section called empty value cards. And this is if a search leads to no matching results. That's fun. I can't wait to explore that, to be honest. We only have a couple more features, a couple new updates this month. So if you're still watching, consider hitting that subscribe button so we can come together next month. Definitely on a much shorter video, <laughs> but we'll finish up here. Uh, we have a new app being released by Shopify. The Shopify subscription app is now in full release. Uh, the Shopify subscription app isn't a new app, but it sounds like they've finished everything they wanted to do with it as it is now in full release. I read about Shopify subscriptions app for the first time in summer editions 2023 you can watch my video on that on my channel and in my summer 2023 editions playlist but here it says it's in full release and you can increase customer lifetime value and recurring revenue with the shopify subscription app which includes a number of features to help you set up and manage subscriptions directly from your admin that's worth looking into more it just mentions that increasing customer lifetime value and boosting recurring revenue with shopify's new subscription offering integrates seamlessly into the admin and makes it easy to set up and manage simple subscriptions use cases. Obviously, in today's day and age, everybody is trying to find a way to have a subscription service, whether it's just watching something on Netflix or a product or a face cream that runs out or anything like that. If you can get a customer on a subscription plan, that is just gonna generate a large customer base, more reviews, more revenue for you, and they have now fully released the Shopify subscription app made and developed Shopify app that you don't have to pay for. Um, definitely check it out. If you can integrate some sort of subscription model into your business, it is huge for all the right analytics. Moving along here, there is a new update here that is very brief. I'll be covering this very deeply and I'm super excited to do so. Shopify editions winter 24 is live. It says elevate your commerce business with 100 plus new product updates to help build for the long term. There's not going to be much more here because Shopify Editions is again their twice a year massive product update event where they create an entire website page for 100 new product updates for everything that they're working on. It's super exciting. And if you want to learn all about that, definitely subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be covering that in much depth coming up. Uh, this little improvement sounds a little complicated, but it's it's not at all. Um, it just says new meta objects. That's the keyword here. Experience in the admin. It says today we're introducing a new admin experience to simplify working with meta objects. Again, that's the keyword here. Featuring definition specific views and dramatically improved search and filter capabilities. So there's two different things here. There's meta objects and there's meta fields. Okay. So for example, if you run a t-shirt business and on the product page, you have a drop down menu that says material. Now, if you run a t-shirt business, but you also sell jeans and you also sell hoodies or beanies or hats or anything, the material that is made for each of these products is going to change. So to easily display the material information accurately on each one of these products, what you do is you would create a meta field in your product page. Um, in your settings, and then you can easily fill out, have this drop down menu on each product page. But when the user clicks material and the drop down comes, you will input the correct one here without having to rearrange your product page or do that much manual work. So that's what a meta field is. 
a meta object is kind of the same thing, but it's for objects like pictures and files and these sort of things. So it says they're just introducing a new experience to simplify working with meta objects. And if you go into your admin and you try to add some meta objects, you'll see some uh, improvements there. We're starting to see some new features that are being mentioned in Shopify Winter 24 editions, um, like this improvement here in this new feature. It says Shop Cash Offers is now Shop Campaigns. So it says Shop Cash Offers is giving merchants more ways to scale and grow under a new name, Shop Campaigns. So all that seems to be happening here is Shop Cash is now turning into Shop Campaigns. Essentially, Shop Cash is an incentive for customers to buy from you on the Shop app. Shop app is Shopify's marketplace of Shop if I merchants and the incentive to do that to customers is that if they buy from the shop app, they can earn shop cash. They can then use shop cash to pay for items and orders on the shop app. And this kind of creates a full circle incentive. This is a, a loyalty program, but instead of setting it up independently in your store, you can use Shopify shop cash incentive. Um, and then if you combine that with the shop from a marketplace and different marketplaces, you know, it makes more sense for customers to use their shop cash to complete their orders. And then also helps you promote your products on the shop marketplace by essentially offering customers little discounts if they're using the shop cash uh, that they earn. But now shop cash is now turning into shop campaign. All right, guys, this is the last update we have for January. If you're watching this far, go ahead and subscribe so we can continue on the new features that we have on the changelog for the next month. But this last little update is just a tiny little improvement for, again, uh, meta fields and meta objects. It says a new, new dynamic source selector in the online store editor. So today we are introducing a new dynamic source selector, making it easier than ever to search and filter your available meta fields and meta objects in the online store editor when using data sources. This is uh, this is actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to looking into this because sometimes when you're setting up meta fields, they are super helpful, but just the connecting them is very difficult. Uh, you'll learn to hate this little burger looking icon to connect a meta field or a meta object, but it sounds like now there's going to be a source selector so that you can easily find uh, your meta fields, meta objects, and connect them a lot more easier. And that is it, guys. Wow, what a month. Honestly, I wasn't expecting this many updates. I thought it was going to be a lot of like Shopify edition stuff that they also put in here, but not really. It just looks like they, you know, had a strong month and they had a lot to do. They had a lot of stuff they needed to finish off last year and they kind of all put it together in this massive <laughs> update to start the year. Just gonna continue to scroll down these to refresh your memory. And if any of these are extremely relevant to you or catch your attention, you can go to shopifychangelog.com and learn more about it. Again, these things always come out in, in, in small portions. They start in a small market and then they expand outward. Um, so if you see something that, you, that you're really looking forward to, just uh, subscribe to the channel and maybe in a month or two, we will see an improvement on the new feature uh, that will expand into your market. But if you're still watching this video and you want to join a free community of like-minded Shopify entrepreneurs where we just like to grow our businesses together. We like to learn about the platform. We like to learn from others' experiences. Consider subscribing. It's free. And if you do, enjoy all the content coming out for winter editions. Enjoy all the how-to videos and perspective I've learned along the years. And if you like these changelog videos and the new updates, I do them once a month on this channel. Subscribe. And if you do, I will see you next video.